Teardown time. Uh, this is an LED light bulb from the dollar store. It cost me a princely $1.25. And it's a pretty good example of the end state of the LED light bulbs. Uh, if you're a, a viewer of my channel from way back, you would recognize it did a long study in LED light bulbs, basically uh, tracking your uh, progress from uh, very expensive items into uh, what you see here, uh, which is uh, pretty much the end state of the uh, market. Uh, you take the bulb out of the packaging and cut it in half. Uh, that gives a good, nice cross section of the bulb. Uh, on the top there, you can see the diffuser dome. That's uh, basically a bit of uh, plastic uh, that's used to uh, push the light around. Uh, right below that is a circuit board and it has the LEDs, and the LEDs are all pointing upwards. So, of course, they fire the light basically straight up. Uh, but, of course, an incandescent light bulb, you really want light to come around the bulb. In fact, actually, the old incandescents pushed most of their light on the sides because uh, the filament uh, stood upright. Uh, so uh, the diffuser basically is trying to push the light around. Uh, and on that little metal circuit board basically is all the components uh, that's required by the assembly except for a, a small wire around resistor and an electrolytic capacitor. Uh, just below the board uh, you can see that uh, there's a metal heat sink. Uh, the LEDs get pretty hot so the heat sink there is a way of drawing the heat downwards into a larger surface area and then for the air to carry away the heat. Uh, you can see of course it's also been covered with plastic. Uh, if you had a miswired lamp socket uh, that metal would turn hot, of course. This is a non-isolated design. Uh, and, of course, that would be pretty unsafe. So uh, you can see that there's the requirement those get covered uh, with plastic. Um, and below that, of course, just the uh, standard A socket uh, designed by Mr. Edison uh, way back when in the 1800s. Why don't we grab uh, a polar graph here? Uh, what I do is I lay the bulb down on, on the side and I basically measure the light output in 10 degree increments. And that gives me some indication of the intensity of the light. Uh, the further you are from the center of the circle, uh, basically the more intense the light. The uh, Phillips bulb is in blue and the uh, dollar store bulb is in red. And you can of course see the dollar store bulb basically pushing most of its light out uh, towards the right there. Not too much on the sides. The other thing of course is the area of these cross sections should be about the same. Both bulbs were rated at 800 lumens so uh, basically the area of those two circles should be about the same, but I think the Phillips is just a, a touch bigger, so I suspect the ratings of the bulb might be just slightly optimistic in terms of light output. Uh, in this picture here, uh, we take a look at the actual circuit board, uh, a model of cost-effective design. 11 LEDs, one bridge rectifier, two resistors, and a control RIC, and that's it. Uh, there's a connector on the board which allows a, a electrolytic capacitor to be to installed in the back of the assembly, um, and that's the entire uh, component count, which is really impressive. Um, State-of-the-art cheap. I mean, uh, that capacitor in the back there is worth, what, three cents. The uh, resistors have been millipennies. The bridge rectifier probably well under a cent. And then the controller probably a couple pennies as well. Um, and uh, what, what happens basically is the voltage comes in from AC, gets converted to high voltage DC, gets uh, applied to the uh, regulator, oh, pardon me, the controller IC. You can see there's no smoothing capacitor on the outside of the uh, regulator. Uh, it basically just probably chops it up at a high enough speed that the uh, uh, you can't perceive flicker. Um, if we uh, take the package off uh, from the controller and take a look at this uh, die, pretty classic uh, picture here. Uh, the top half of the die there is basically a transistor, and that's probably what's being uh, run at a chop. Uh, it, it basically chopped the current up um, to get the LEDs to glow. Um, and the bottom half is the uh, uh, basically control logic. But if you zoom into it, actually, you quickly realize it's maybe only about 50 so transistors of a logic. So a really straightforward controller. Uh, this one uh, isn't uh, suitable for demo applications, it only works in one mode. Uh, the die marking uh, doesn't relate to anything that I could find. So if anyone knows about this uh, vendor, I wouldn't mind hearing from you. Um, and then let's come back to that uh, uh, resistor. Uh, basically, cross section, you can see uh, the coil of wire that forms up a wire wound resistor. Now, Unless I'm mistaken, I believe that this particular uh, resistor is being used as a, as a basically a fuse. So if anything goes really badly wrong, uh, the wire round resistor should open up. Now we come back to the picture of the cross section. We can see clearly the wire round resistor is wired towards the um, the neutral portion of the bulb, basically the uh, the outside area, and then goes up to the emitter. Um, and of course, if that was the case, that wouldn't be so good because when the fuse opens up, that would still leave most electronics energized. Uh, to get uh, a UL or a CSA marking, you have to de-energize the electronics as quickly as possible, which almost always means putting the fuse as, po as close as possible in the hot. So, if that is a fuse, or meant to be a fuse, I'm pretty sure it's on the wrong side. 
Anyways, there you have it. That was the uh, end state of LED bulb construction. Um, if you ever fold incandescent bulbs, they kind of stabilized out for about a hundred years. If you can imagine the technology, once it was invented, there was a whole bunch of innovation. And then for about a hundred years, quite frankly, nothing really changed. Um, you know, and I think quite frankly, we're looking at the end state here for an A-shaped LED light bulb. And it's kind of like the thing you'll see for the next hundred, uh, unless some other newer disruptive technology comes over the horizon. If you want to take a look at some of the photographs, I have them on my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com, especially the integrated circuit, if you want to take a download of the uh, silicon die. Always fun to look at.